Scotland-based EV startup Monroe Vehicles has unveiled its second vehicle, the MK1 pickup, at the fully charged Live North 2023 show. Described as an ultra-capable, ultra-utilitarian vehicle, the Monroe MK1 pickup targets customers operating in challenging sectors such as mining, construction, utilities, agriculture, and defense. As with the Monroe MK1 truck, the pickup variant features an 82.4 kilowatt hour battery pack that enables a driving range of more than 190 miles, which converts to 305 kilometers on the WLTP cycle or up to 16 hours of off-road use. Monroe says the battery can charge from 15 to 80 percent SOC in just 36 minutes using a 100 kilowatt DC charger. The battery pack powers an all-electric powertrain delivering 375 horsepower, which converts to 280 kilowatts and 516 pound-feet or 700 newton meters of instantly available torque in the range-topping performance model. That's enough for a zero to 60 miles per hour sprint in 4.9 seconds. Monroe will also offer a 295 horsepower, which converts to 220 kilowatt powertrain and a choice of utility and range variants. The Monroe MK1 pickup will have the same starting price as the truck in the UK $62,000, which converts to 49,995 British pounds, excluding 23% VAT. The startup claims deliveries will start later this year. Now let's take a look at the previous reveal event that went live in December of 2022. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for the global reveal of the Monroe Mark I, and thanks to everybody watching the live stream at home. So the biggest thanks I want to give is to our team who made tonight possible. So without these guys that you see on the screen, none of this would have happened. And I am so proud of what we're about to show you, what we've been working on. I just, I, honestly, I've seen this thing every day for the last six months, and I just cannot believe what I see every time I see it. So most of you know who Monroe are, um, because you must have found out about this event somehow. But I'll give you a, a, a brief whistle-stop tour on Monroe. So we're a, a relatively small startup. We're located in Scotland, uh, in East Kilbride to be specific. And we've got a 7,500 square foot workshop facility there, which we use as a R&D facility um, but also we'll probably build some pre-production vehicles there uh, next year, as you'll find out in a bit. And uh, we are well, part funded by uh, an impact investor called Elwood Beach Capital, who exclusively only invest in uh, projects that are there to decarbonize dirty industries. So why do we do what we do? What is our motivator? Well, our motivator really comes from climate change and the state that the environment is in right now. And uh, everyone who talks about climate emergency and all these like hyperboles. And I just want to really like point out our personal beliefs on, on environment, which is that it won't be just legislative, legislative changes. That's quite hard to say. Legislative changes, uh, and it won't just be uh, scientific and technological breakthroughs and new products that will help us with climate change. But overriding all of those things, it's going to be behavior changes that affect climate change. So this is how we perceive vehicles, how we buy vehicles, how we use vehicles, how we look after those vehicles, and ultimately what we do at the end of those vehicles' lives. So we can't just lean on technology and uh, policy as a crutch. We have to start thinking about our own misconceptions and preconceptions of vehicles. So why, why should you trust Monroe to help you uh, move past those barriers? Well, we are eco-conscious from the start. So this, this isn't an OEM that's trying to greenwash by reinventing their product lineup with electric cars. You know, we're, we're our green startup, and our sole purpose is to build this vehicle. And we're building this for work. So when we're thinking about this vehicle, when we're designing the vehicle, we are looking at it just from the point of view of this thing has to be fit for purpose. It has to be ready for work. It's, it's not just a, an accessory. It's not a handbag. It's, it's a tool bag. And our solutions, our values are simple and effective. So we don't think that uh, the solution to climate change is complicated things that 
people will struggle to adapt their behaviours to, we want simple and effective measures to help people decarbonise. So let's talk a moment about forgotten markets, and in particular, uh, 4x4 light vehicles. So typically, uh, big OEMs are focused on what the masses want. So they're focused on hatchbacks and saloons and sports cars and SUVs. And when they get to the commercial light vehicle sector, they've got this massive parts bin of all these parts that they've been using on these vehicles. And why would they build a different vehicle? They've already got all these parts, these indicator stalks, these sensors. We'll just put all those road-going components on a heavy-duty vehicle that we're going to send into mining, agriculture, forestry, and the, the problem is that these solutions aren't really fit for purpose from a reliability point of view, from a design point of view. I, I don't know like, how many of you have been in a, a new pickup truck recently, uh, a base model, you know, not a fancy one with leather seats and all that, but just like what a, what a work crew would have. Scratchy hard plastics, just like shiny, horrible plastic knobs. And it's like, why does it have to be like that? You know, why can't we actually design vehicles around the people that are going to be using them every day, rather than just tacking it on and just trying to make an extra bit of margin. So we went to those forgotten markets and we said, well, what do you actually want? Like, not, not what do you want from a, a fleet perspective point of view, not a purchasing manager point of view, but from what, what do you need to operate your business? And more importantly, what do your operators want? What do the people that are driving the vehicles actually want to see? What do they want to get in each day? What features do they need? What things do they not like? What things do they like? So we took all that data from all those interviews, and we fed it into a really comprehensive design process where we said, OK, let's forget about how cars are currently built, and let's think about what if we came at this from a different point of view, like if we were designing machinery, like a forklift, for example. We wouldn't look at, oh, what uh, parts can we borrow off a Morris Miner to build a forklift? We would start from scratch. We would look at, OK, is there industrial switches we could use? And we took a very similar approach with this. This is more like a piece of machinery than a car. And what you get with that is like a much higher quality vehicle. And it's also built around human interaction and not just like design phases. So we did the, we did the interviews and got the data. We went through this design process. And we went through a, a comprehensive prototyping process, which is the, the vehicle you see upstairs, which has been in active testing for well over a year now, that, that is covered hundreds of miles, thousands of hours of test data in the most extreme environments. This hasn't been just you know, driven to a, a charger and back again or around the M25. This has been in some of the most arduous conditions that Scotland and the UK have to offer. And there's two things we wanted to do with that prototype. Firstly, we wanted to understand the technology, what things work, what things don't work, what uh, a vehicle that's subjected to those, uh, you know, those conditions requires. But also, we wanted to challenge some misconceptions and, and going back to like behaviours and how people behave and think about these vehicles is, you know, when we started this project in 2019, our inbox was full of questions like, can an EV go through water? Can I, can I pressure wash my EV? And you have to remember that like, now there's, there's more EV adoption, people understand EVs a bit more, but when we started, we had to start from that low baseline of like, people really need to see that an EV can do these things that we're going to say it can do. It can go into these harsh environments, it can drive through water, it can be pressure washed. Um, and, and so that's why we built a concept. That's why we built the vehicle you see upstairs. It wasn't because that is what we want to build. That wasn't our production intent. That was, hey, look, this is what electric drive can do. And with that electric drive, we, we just unlocked so many possibilities, and it, we surprised even ourselves with the feedback that we had from that vehicle. We had people drive it from all ages. We had 96-year-olds uh, drive it, and she, she told us this story about how she used to be a rally driver, which was fantastic. I thought it was incredible, a, a female rally driver in the, like in the 50s, but she, she just got in it, and she was going through all this mad terrain. And I was just like, I can't believe she'd never driven an off-road vehicle before, like other than a rally car. She's, you know, going to all these axle twisters and like mad, to, yeah. Just to, for, for someone with no training to get in a vehicle and just press go, it just it even surprised us that how easy, how effective electric drive is off-road. So 
we validated our market, we validated our design philosophy, we validated the whole concept of the vehicle, and that has led up to the Munro Mark I. Isn't this thing beautiful? Like, like I said, I've been looking at this every day for the last couple of months, and I just, I still can't believe it. So this is what our, our perky little team in uh, Glasgow have built. Uh, and this is the Munro Mark I, which is the production intent prototype for uh, vehicles that we're going to build uh, next year. So, thank you. So going back to our design philosophy, and uh, when we were designing the production vehicle, we set ourselves some targets that we wanted to make. So we wanted this thing to have a usable range. We didn't want people to, uh, you know, we didn't want to give people that pedal tropes any justification for worrying about, oh, where am I going to charge it, and I can't go to the highlands and back, and blah. And we wanted it to have enough power. We wanted it to be a workhorse that could tow huge amounts of load and have a crew of people in it, and have equipment in it. And we wanted something that was cool as well. And I'm, I'm pleased to say that we've exceeded all of those uh, parameters that we kind of drew on that whiteboard uh, all that time ago. We've ended up with a range of over 180 miles and nearly 400 horsepower, not 60 in under five seconds. It's, yeah, I, it's just incredible. I, yeah. I just, I'm lost for words. Like it's, I can't believe that our little team in a, in a shed in Glasgow have done this. Um, let's talk about the exterior. So, this, nothing on this vehicle is without a purpose. Everything on this vehicle has a function. There's no superfluous design features on the vehicle. From the quad headlights at the front, two high beam, two low beam each side. This is designed so you can easily replace a broken headlight without replacing a whole cluster. Saving loads of money. These are, these are standard 90 mil headlights that you find on trucks and buses. All LED by standard. There's no halogen lights on this vehicle. Side saddle storage for keeping your charging cable in. Frunks are clumsy, you know, you have to lean in and this is easy. You just click the latches and open up and chuck your charging cable in there. Ergonomic side steps, you can easily get in and out. You're not going to slip out of the vehicle. A huge cargo door. One of the biggest cargo doors on the market. Easily get all your equipment in and out of the back door. Nice level loading bay with tie-down straps. Everything on this vehicle has a purpose. And interior. Interior is where we've spent so much time. It's actually where we started with the vehicle. We designed this vehicle around the occupants. This wasn't an afterthought of how do we fit people in. The, the interior of this thing is cavernous. This is blows people's expectations. It's, you, can, you can sit in the driver's seat with a laptop on your knees, and the laptop won't touch a steering wheel. And then I can sit in the back. I'm six foot four, and my knees don't touch the seat in front of me. So that's five full adults, and you're not elbowing each other and playing footsie and laptops everywhere. You can sit in the vehicle, do your work until the weather dries up. It's a work companion. And everything you touch in the interior is a, is a premium material. We focused on all the touch points. We didn't want any horrible cheap plastics inside. It's milled aluminium or uh, a vinyl. You know, it's, it's soft touch materials. And the key part of all of this is it's built to last. This isn't something that's a fast fashion item. We're not jumping on some EV bandwagon. This thing is built to last a lifetime. It's built to last double or triple what current light vehicles typically last. So in a mining environment, you know, you, your typical diesel, diesel pickup, it's, its end of life is three to five years. You, it's beyond economical repair at that stage, really. And it goes into the second hand market, and it lasts a few more years, and that's it done. And the carbon cost of that is massive, because you've produced something just to throw it away, and you burned all that diesel at the same time. This thing is designed to last decades. It's, it's just designed to go on and on and on. It's got some of the heaviest duty materials. It's just, I, I just find it incredible. Like, why can't all cars be built like this? You know, why do we buy things that we just chuck away and snappy plastics and, you know, horrible twisty chassis? Like, 
we could just build cars properly and class leading off-road performance that is not a production car that is more capable off-road than this vehicle. And that's tried and tested by people who, they know their stuff. The people that have extensively tested this vehicle, they, they go to some of the harsh environments in the world and they tell us that this is better than any standard vehicle that they've ever driven off-road. Aggressive approach and departure angles, huge axle articulation, massive ground clearance, they all contribute to getting over huge obstacles off-road. And that you don't need to modify this car, you can buy it and you can go immediately off-road with it. There's no lifting suspension or changing bushes, you, you can just go. And the biggest thing is it's, it's your work companion. It's, it's designed to keep you going through the day, whether you're a farmer and you're storing your lunch in a cool box or uh, you're a forester and you've got your chainsaw in the back. This thing is designed to be your companion. It's not designed to be some cheap, nasty thing you drive around just to get from A to B. It's designed to be your truck that you charge your power tools in. And we're, we're releasing this vehicle in three distinct variants. Utility, range and performance, which start from 49995 excluding VAT. So this is it's not even that much more expensive than a diesel truck. And I, I just, maybe I'm missing something. Have we done that number right? Like 49995 plus VAT for an electric vehicle that can do nearly 200 miles and you know, with that much power and capability. Utility is for the people that just need the bare minimum to get to work. They just, they just need something that will get them from A to B, get the tools in, good stuff. Range, for people that want to venture a bit further, maybe do a bit of adventuring, camping, and performance for people that just want to show off. You know, and actually, there is a practical reason to have the performance, which is you can tow three and a half ton with it, and you won't get stuck on any hills. It'll just effortlessly pull payloads. And all of this circles back to our commitment to sustainability and how that's embedded in the values of this company. We build products that last. We're decarbonizing the light vehicle industry and we're building a factory that is powered by 100% renewables. So we're trying to be as carbon neutral as possible. And when can you get this? Is it in five years, 10 years? Like most OEMs saying, oh yeah, we'll do a hydrogen pickup in five years. No, you can get it next year. Early adopters and trial partners, first delivery is happening second half of next year. And for everybody else, production starts in 2024. And it's not just a five-door hardtop. We've created a modular architecture underneath this vehicle, which means that we can easily expand the model range in the coming years and months. From traybacks to pickups, single cabs, six-wheel drive, you can easily alter this vehicle and make it into the vehicle that's specific to your needs. So what's next? Well, we're going to build a factory. We're going to build a factory in central Scotland. We're going to build on the progress we've already made. We're going to produce 2,500 vehicles by 2027 annually. And we're going to make 300 skilled jobs in the central belt of Scotland. We're bringing vehicle manufacturing back to Scotland for the first time in over 40 years. I think that's an incredible achievement. And I'm just so proud of what we've done. I think it's an incredible machine, an excellent workhorse, and I, I can't wait for you guys to see it up close. Can I get um, the Munro team to come on stage, please? Anyone that's Munro? Come on, Gregor. These guys have done what is basically an impossible. They've built one of the first vehicles to be designed and built in Britain in ages. And with such little resources and time, such pressure to get the job done. They've worked through the days, the nights, had barely any sleep. So I just owe all my gratitude and thanks to these guys. And I want you to all give them a massive round of applause. So thank you so much. And now, 
I'd love you all to come up on stage and touch and feel and look at the vehicle and ask any of the questions that you want and get up close to it. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thanks for coming. Come and have a look at the vehicle.